it is chop making time and what better way to make the chops for the vise than using the vise we just installed yesterday so let's get to it <coughs> I mean, so this is the chop that I'm using I'm literally just going to I'm gonna end up sawing this in half and then quartering out a piece it's going to be 11 inches long and well however deep it needs to be so it's basically going to go all the way down I might even make a little beard for it it will hang down just a little bit past the uh, a little bit past the guide posts but obviously it's going to come flush with the bench top so it's going to be at least At least six inches deep, uh, or at least six and a half inches deep, probably closer to. If I go ahead and do the entire, uh, the entire depth of the vise, a little bit past, we're looking at about eight inches. <clears throat> this board is nine inches, well, just under nine inches wide, so. Who knows, we may end up using the whole thing. We'll see. We'll see how it all pans out. I'll tell you, I've never, I haven't, I have worked with, but not very often, uh, this like figured maple. And it's pretty, but it sucks to work with frankly. Uh, I got this one edge kind of cleaned up for the most part. Kind of looking at it in the vise the way it sits it almost I almost want to use the whole thing <laughs> just because it's so large I mean just look at it. Who wouldn't want a vise that large but that wouldn't be very practical and we don't need that. Yeah. So it's, and you can't really, can't even really see, like, when I was doing the other edge, it was, I could barely tell the difference, if any, between, uh, with the grain on this, because it's so awkward. It's got undulating grain. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that figure plays into the whole strength of everything, but I'm kind of assuming that it does. See how the? I mean, this bench does not move anywhere. And when I got this good and tight in here. It doesn't move inside the bench either, or inside the vise. This is actually not not too bad. Kind of wants to throw your plane everywhere, but the chips even look kind of funky. All I'm doing, I'm not squaring it up really yet. I'm just kind of rough cutting, like getting the edges smooth, and then I'll cut it in half, and we'll work from there. Well, I need to sharpen my thighs. This is my number six. <laughs> it doesn't even want to take a shaving. It probably needs to be sharpened too.
No. It's good to sharp, it's just not flat, the board. So, just taking the shaving right here, because that's the high spot. And again down here. So far, I really like uh, this bench height. You can tell I'm a few inches above, two and a half inches above the vi above the tabletop bench top, and it, uh, which I think is going to be, you know, somewhere between an inch to a couple inches above the uh, the bench top. It's going to be pretty average. And seems to be working out like really good, so. I'll tell you like regular woods, like regular, regular maple or oak or mahogany, cherry, all that stuff works really well. And you don't, even the softwoods, you don't really have to press in order to get a shaving. Here you kind of do it, or it just skips right over it. This is some gnarly stuff. This floor seems to be working the best. I'm not scoring it up yet. That's good. Got one small crack right here, a little check. About an inch or so. And then I got, I got kind of cleaned up this edge. It cleaned up quite nicely. And then I'll clean up this edge. This wood that I, it was kind of just random, uh, random wood from the lumber yard that was, or from the hardwood dealer that was kind of really discarded, just chucked into a tri wall, a little crate. But it did have, they did coat the ends of it, all the pieces in there, so that was good. Protected it for the most part. And all I'm doing now is taking off the uh, the sealant that they used. I think a file card or not a uh, scraper works best for this. gum up a, a scraper that I can get pretty easily with the rag. 
than trying to clean all that crap out of my planes. All I'm trying to do here is kind of get a flat surface. And just remember, you don't want to go all the way off the end because it'll break off unless you support it somehow. Just clean it up nicely, actually. take off there kind of for this kind of wood anyway frankly this is the end of my vice chop so it doesn't need to be perfectly square or anything See it to hold wood. Tricks just a little low right there, but I think we're good. Now I'm just kind of evening out the Kind of evening out the uh, the surface. They paint sharp corners, so it just takes two seconds to hit it with some paper. So. We've got that. Let's see if we can <clears throat> we'll actually be able to use it.
the dog that is. So all I did was flip up the dog here and uh, we use it to clamp on our piece. It sticks up nicely here. And see how it planes this way, I don't know. Kind of looks like I'm going with the grain, but uh, you really don't know with this stuff. Now this piece is heavily um, hit and miss. There's, it's nowhere near straight. So, cut. definitely against the green. Feels like it anyway. So let's flip it and then we'll go transversely. for that it's not set up for it's not set up really like a scrub plane or anything but it's kind of working now you can see it's it's low right here and right up in here high spots. into the machine screws and I may end up doing that eventually but right now what I want to do is just get it set up and get it going and the easiest way for me to do that and I think it might actually work perfect is to basically just run <clears throat> run wood screws two of them per side on either side of the uh, ends of the vise I think that'll do the trick. Either I need to sharpen my plane, or this stuff is really nasty hard. You know, maybe a little of both. This is the 
part that nobody ever likes to show. Part that takes forever. All I like to show is the good stuff. Well, there's other stuff that happens. just as important as to know about before you get into this. If you don't like a good workout, don't get into hand tool woodworking. Look how nice this this bench, this bench is holding, holding up in this vise, how well it's holding the work. Couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, I did think, I think I mentioned it in earlier videos, but I did think about a leg vise, like one of those big monster leg vices, but it was just kind of impractical for uh, my application at the time. And I thought this was, was going to be good and easy, and it, and it is. <clears throat> I don't know about y'all, but I like to, I have a tile floor. So. I gotta clean up every so often. You just start slipping and sliding all over the place. Just get the chips out of the way. Take a couple more passes, maybe we'll get this cleaned up and then uh, I'll stop and bring you guys back for the rest of it. It's almost to the point where you got to take such a heavy cut, or it's such a, a powerful cut through this that, I mean, yeah, we're just scrubbing it, but I don't like to take such a heavy cut because then you kind of get a little bit off plane the way you want it to be. Let's try it. such a heavy cut. I think we're getting pretty close. It's a little bit lighter. this for some vice jaws. Whew. Getting a good workout. This is making for a good, a good Sunday afternoon. It's 
So I'll keep working this down. Get uh, get both sides flat, and then I'll start looking at uh, <clears throat> at squaring it up and cut it in half, and then rip it down to a good height where it's right above the uh, right above the bench top, so that we can plane it down once we've mounted everything. We can plane them both to the same level as the top and and be done. So friends and family, I love you. Everybody else, I'll see you later today probably.